This is integration by parts, um, part three. So these are another couple of examples. So it says to integrate this problem here. So again, I'm gonna rewrite my radical as an exponent. And as I do that, okay, so we've got that there. Then this expression will become raised to the one half power for the radical, but a negative because it's down in the denominator. So then this is where it gets a little bit complicated. You've got two expressions in parentheses. So how do you know which one to let you equal, okay? You could try both and see which one makes more sense, but typically the one with the higher exponent is going to be your u because when you take the derivative of it, you'll end up with something that has one less power of an exponent. So when you take the integral of an x squared, you get something like an x, right? Um, also, another indicator to help you identify which one of these would be u is which one is inside of another function. So if you notice, this is just x minus 8 all by itself. Nothing is happening to it, right? However, this expression here has a power of a negative 1 half. So there is an outside function happening to this here inside the parentheses. So that is what I would let u equal. So two different ways to think about it, but hopefully you can figure out which one to let u equal. If you try one and it's not working, then try the other one. So du would be the derivative of this, which is 2x minus 16 plus 0, but with the dx tagged along. Now this time I have two variable, two terms here, so I did have to put them in parentheses so that the dx applies to both, right? Instead of writing 2x dx minus 16 dx, you just put it in parentheses and you could put the dx on the side. And that's helpful because if you notice here, there's only one dx, not two of them, okay? So it does help us a little bit in that regard. Now, um, we do have an issue though, because if I go to substitute this in, I do have this would become u. So I'd have u to the negative one half but I've got this expression times dx. And if you notice what I have here for du, that's not exactly the same thing. However, if you do notice, this is basically two times that. So what I could do is multiply both sides of this equation here by a half. And if I did that, um, this stays one half du. And if I distribute this, half of 2 is 1, and half of 16 is 8. So now I do have something to substitute for x minus 8 dx. So that will become 1 half du. And just as in example 3 in part 2 of these lectures, um, you can separate this putting the multiplier in the front and the du in the back because they are all products and you can rearrange your products using your commutative property, right? Um, so then let's go ahead and integrate this. And again, just to keep this separate from everything, I'm gonna put a note here that says this is my side work, right? So it's not to be confused with the rest of this problem. And again, you have to remember your equal sign so that this is relevant to your problem, okay? Otherwise it's not. You're just talking about a bunch of stuff for nothing, okay? So I'm just trying to refrain people from turning in chicken scratch versus turning in logical um, explanations, okay? And really showing the reader what is going on. If a normal person that has a little bit of understanding of calculus looks at a bunch of chicken scratch, they're not gonna be able to follow you. Um, you're relying too much on the ability of the instructor to make sense of what you're writing. Um, and that's not what I try to train people to do when they take my calculus classes. What I want you guys to do is to be able to write logical mathematical statements so that anyone that has any small amount of um, calculus um, experience can read this. Think about if you were writing it with a classmate, right? You're writing this for a classmate, not your instructor. How are you going to explain what the answer is coming from if you're talking to a classmate? Okay, pretend you're just going to take a picture of this and send it to them. Um, it needs to be able to be explained thoroughly. 
So here I'm going to actually integrate. So my multiplier is going to stay there and I'm going to, well, I can rewrite it like this. Okay, so then I can apply my power rule, which says I'm going to have u to the one half divided by one half, which is the same thing as multiplying by two over one. And then because I've applied an integration rule, I do have to now put my constant plus C. I do apologize for the interruptions in the video. I just had a colleague come in and ask me about something and then my phone is ringing. Um, I'm apologizing because there is a flood in the building right now while I'm trying to do these lectures. So um, that is why I'm getting interrupted a little bit here and there. Um, Hopefully that stops or I'm able to pause the video before someone starts speaking to me. Um, but let's continue. So the 2 and the 2 will reduce and I'll end up with u to the 1 half plus c. But again, this is not my final answer because the problem was, giving me, was given to me in terms of x. So I do have to back sub what u was. And u was x squared minus 16x plus 3. So I'm still going to have my one half power and I'm still going to have my plus C. Now, if I wanted to write it formally, I would have to put this inside of a radical and then my plus C off to the side. Plus C does not have a one half exponent, so it should not be inside of a radical. But this would be my final answer there. Okay, so example five we have this expression here this one's a little bit easier to identify the inner and the outer function so sine is on the outside and 5x is on the inside so in this case u would equal 5x well then du would just be 5 and then we tag on a dx now again you'll notice i have the dx but i don't have the 5 so if i multiply both sides by 1 fifth that'll cancel the 5 and I'll just have 1 dx or dx so this expression this expression here will become sine of u and then I'll have my 1 fifth now I could put the 1 fifth here or I could just go ahead and put it all the way to the outside right that has been the next step that I've been doing all along is even though I have it inside the integral, I eventually take it out. Well, there's nothing to prevent you from just putting it on the outside to begin with, okay? Since we know eventually that's the route that's going to uh, take place. So now I'm just integrating um, the sine of u. Well, the integral of sine of u is negative cosine of u. And since I've taken the integral and applied the integration rule, now is the point where I add the plus c. So um, this, if I simplify it, will be negative one-fifth cosine of u plus c. And again, the problem was not given to me in terms of u's. It was given to me in terms of x's. So I do have to back substitute and plug in for u. u is 5x. So I'm going to plug in a 5x there. And this is already formally written, so I can go ahead and box that.